Assalamu alaikum. In the most holy name of Allah, the all wise, true, and living God, to whom all praise is due forever, for giving to you and I a divine leader, teacher, guide, and the greatest of the messengers and his exalted Christ, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we ever thank Allah and his messenger for giving to us the minister Louis Farrakhan, his greatest national representative of both himself and also of the nation of Islam, both in America and abroad. I greet you once again in the nation's greetings of peace and paradise. I salam alaikum. You and I are meeting here this afternoon by the permission of Allah so that we can share much information as time will permit. This is not an ordinary day in time, and this is why this particular meeting was called. This is the first time that I have been asked to address a joint meeting of the NGC, GCC class, and also of our brothers in the FOI. You notice that throughout this particular year, there has been a precedent in this type of joint meeting. There have been many meetings of the NGC and FOI, both here in Phoenix, Arizona, and also in Chicago, Illinois. It is due to the fact that as we grow closer to the end of one world and the coming in of another world, that it pleases Allah, who came in the person of Master Fayyad Muhammad, that we come together as a family. The family structure is everything to the foundation of Islam. And it is so critical that we understand things in the proper perspective of their family relationship. We know that the father is the head of the household. And we know that the mother works with the father in partnership to try to keep the children and family members all coordinating and functioning properly. I say all of this to begin some of the information that I hope I would be able to share with you this afternoon. It is not a coincidence that this year, in 1983, has brought about some of the most dramatic changes and turning points in the history of our nation and also in the history of the world. It is not a coincidence that I am saying these things to you this afternoon in Phoenix, Arizona, in this particular month that is devoted to abstinence called Ramadan. According to the old history of Islam, out of which we are now passing through very rapidly, we know that Surah 2, the call, tells us in about verse 183 or 185 that it was in the month of Ramadan that the beginning of the revelation of the Holy Quran began. Over a period of 23 years, a little over 23 years, the entire book was revealed to Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah. We know that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has told us that at the end of a specific period of time marked by the lunar calendar time, which was given to us especially through the Arab nation, he calculated this time according to the Hijra of flight of Prophet Muhammad from Mecca to Medina. But all of these were signs pointing to its complete fulfillment 1400 years hence. We know that 1400 years ended in 1979. In the fall of 1979, some of the writers say November, they give the date of November, and some give the date of December. And we know that 1980 marked the first year of the 15th century 
of the Israel. And we are now three years hence. For several years now, I have devoted a special study to the Holy Quran as I was inspired to do so exactly three years ago to this month, the month of Ramadan. It was on December 1st, which occurred at that time on a Monday in 1980, in which I began to read the Holy Quran through once a week. And in this particular month of Ramadan, having completed this initial three years of reading, I have learned much. I have learned a great deal more than I would have if I had not been inspired to do so. I would not be able to speak to you right now if it wasn't for the urgency of the time and what we can see coming upon this nation and the current of the urgency upon us to prepare ourselves both mentally and spiritually to be able to handle and to be able to receive what is about to come to the world in the form of a new book and a new scripture designed by a true and living God put into the hands of his servant, the apostle and his last of the messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We know that our brother minister, Lord Falcon, has been teaching for the last six years and that he has been speaking more and more in this particular year in the tour that he has been giving throughout the country on a subject entitled Christ's Imminent Return, He Makes All Things New. And we know that that final group of dissidents, we want to call them that, of opposers, opponents, to the messenger and to the new teachings of Islam have been the preacher. Is that right? Yes. And the minister in his tour is now breaking the ice in the ice houses. Yes. And he is getting the ministers and the preachers of the gospel to stand up now, shouting with enthusiasm and joy in the breaking open. Okay? of the secret of the Bible that they had never understood before. If it had not been for the teaching of the minister of Sarkon, through the guidance and inspiration of Allah and his messenger, we would not be able to be the kind of witness bearers that we are today. Do you understand what I mean? We can witness privately in our homes, we can have private discussions, we can have a private exchange of views, but we need a guiding force a guiding light, is that right? That makes possible a unified witness before the world. That means that the responsibility of witnessing for both the men and the women and our children is now coming upon us. And when I say witnessing, I'm speaking on the level of divine gifts. Divine gifts mean such things as receiving revelation in the form of dreams in the form of vision, okay? in the form of healing, in the form of all those things that are described both in the Bible and the Holy Quran, as that particular spirit being fostered and being brought forth and coming forth through Jesus after his ascension, when he becomes crystallized into the Christ. And the Acts of the Apostles speaks of it as the disciples and some of the women meeting in the upper chamber or in the upper room. And their tongues of fire, is that right? Came over each one, and suddenly they were filled with, with the Spirit, and they began to witness to the world through the channeling of divine gifts. The book says they spoke in many tongues. They began to break, okay, the barriers of communication through divine gifts, which can only be transmitted to the heart, is that right, of a true believer. So I feel 
that if we can really understand what is happening right now, we will be the most happiest people in the world. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad stated then that we will find out who you are. He said that will be the greatest and the happiest moment of your life. The preparation that is going on now, you are a real brother of the North Kashmir, and sending out throughout the nation specially prepared study guides is a part of the preparation for our people to receive the new book, the new revelation coming from Almighty God, Allah. So this puts great demands upon us because as the people all over, outside of our circle, outside who have not officially registered with the nation of Islam, the spirit of Allah is going among the people. And they will be looking for the greater light, is that right? To take them forward into greater understanding of this great man of which the book, Bible and Quran, has coded in a very special language that is now being decoded. The root of Islam is what? Mathematics. And we've been getting more and more and more on the study of mathematics as the root of Islam. Because we cannot talk to scholars. We cannot talk to scientists. We cannot talk to people who are highly educated and trained unless we are able to articulate the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad directly to their root. He has also stated that the Holy Quran is the root of Muhammad. So if the root of Islam is mathematics, then that means for us to really understand the root of the messenger in this book, that means that we have to understand what? The language of mathematics. The language Muhammad has really stated that without mathematics we cannot build. He said that we would be subject to a people who know mathematics. And we cannot be subject to anyone if we are being built into the new rulership of a new world order. We have to master the language that will give us the ability to build a new world society. This year, 1983, we have heard Minister Louis Farrakhan, beginning Thursday, 1983, expel one of the greatest insights into the messianic secret. Is that right? Of the Messiah. And along with that, gradually we've been hearing phrases and statements and formulas referring to specific numbers, one of them being 19, is that right? And perhaps another one being 14. These two sets of initials is the coded language of the Holy Quran. And it is also the coded language of the Bible. It is also the coded language of our lesson given to us to study by Master Farad Muhammad and to the instructions of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In fact, he said in order for us to go forward into the new world, that we will be tested on our lesson. So that means that to really understand the root of the Quran and to really understand the root of the Bible, we have to understand our first term assignment. Is that right? a lesson given to us to study by Almighty God Allah. Two things come to me. Where can we find the root of this number 19 and the root of this number 14 in our lesson? They were designed mathematically to bring us into the greater knowledge of God and what He's about to do. Lesson number one, according to the laborers' instructions given by Master Farad Muhammad, to the laborers in 1930, uh, one in Detroit, Michigan, made this statement. Lesson number one is the basis of our work today. We know that lesson number one contains 14, is that right? Questions and answers. And the messenger said that those 14 questions and answers tallied with the time. 
question. We know that the first question and answer deals with the limit. Is that right? Immunity and UCC. What does this mean? We know that in the 14th question we're talking about domestic life. Is that right? The domestic training responsibility of the women, the mothers of civilization. Is that right? To come forth and to aid the men in the growth and development of the entire nation. We know that in this number 14, if we scale it into other levels of thought, that we come right into the center of the messenger's domestic life. The domestic life of the messenger is been pregnant also within that question and answer 14. We know that throughout this year we have taken this up as a very important study. One that is very, very critical and necessary for us to get through the door into the hereafter. Because if we have any hang up and misunderstandings about the messenger's domestic life, then we are part of the scandal. We are part of the opposition to him. Because it is not for a messenger to produce a sign but it is Allah who chooses wives and children for a messenger. And you read that in Surah 13, entitled The Thunder. So when you think about anything that is giving you trouble, you should write it down and you should begin to meditate on it and ask Allah to give you guidance and direction to keep you on the straight path of Islam. Because we are so close now to the transition. So that means that we all have to work together as a family and help each other to understand the times in which we're living. The number 19 again is impregnant in this number 14. If you take 14 and break it up into two parts, you have a 1 followed by a 4. Is that right? If you add that one and that four together, you get what? Five. And if you add it to the whole number 14, what you get? Nineteen. And if you put the nineteen in front of the fourteen, what do you get? Nineteen fourteen. And that is a date that gives us the time of the ending, right? Of the double civilization. Bringing to an end six thousand years of the devil's rule, and the end of the 15,000th year, is that right, of our calendar, Asiatic calendar cycle of 25,000 years, and then, as one of Elijah Muhammad has taught us, we add an extension of 70 years, is that right, to 1914, and we come to what? 1984. Do you see what I mean? We're also past the third or into the third year of the 15th century of the Arab calendar count of the Hijra. Now we know that Surah 19 is entitled Surah Maryam. And in it, we are given a sign of the birth or the coming in of Jesus' history, but terminate with a sign that he is to be seen again on the resurrection. And to be seen again on the resurrection, he takes on the title of Christ. So we have the sign of the mother and the child, which is a sign of our nation, which is a sign of our family, which is a sign of NDT and GCC, which comes as the 14th, at the end, 14th century after the Hijra. It came to me to share this with you because I know that as we continue to grow, as we continue to evolve, we need to start from a concrete base of measurement. Is that right? So when we talk about the numbers in the book and the numbers in the Quran, we want to start with our lesson of Find it there. 
And then from there, you can begin to evolve and to grow, and you won't be thrown out, as they say, into outer space. They've also been told by the messenger of Allah that Jacob's ladder containing the 15 lungs represents the end of the 15,000th year, and that what? The angels will be seen ascending and descending. Is that right? Coming down from heaven to link up with the righteous, and that they would be carrying us up, is that right? Into heaven. So all of these uh, parables, all of these teachings of both Bible and Holy Quran is all in our lessons, clearly defined for us to study. This means that as we ultimately grow, and as we have to come before the board of examination of Almighty God, Allah and His Messenger, that it behooves us to take a very serious study of our lessons and to be able to transmit the wisdom coming out of that. Because wouldn't it be something? We study the Bible, we know every, all the scriptures, we know the Quran, and then here comes examination and we'll ask a question in our lesson and we can't answer it. So that means that there's a lot of study that's yet designed for us that we must get quickly. The Holy Quran gives us in Surah 97 a very important key which indicates why we're taking up this kind of study right now. Why Allah is permitting this kind of information to be shared right now in this month of Ramadan. Briefly, we have five verses there. Beginning with these words. The light of majesty. What will make thee comprehend what the night of majesty is? The night of majesty is better than one thousand months. The angel and the spirit descend in it by the permission of thy Lord for every affair. Peace it is till the rising of the morning. I agree. By the calculation of time according to the sickness that's given in Malani Muhammad Ali's translation of the Holy Quran, he says that a thousand months is equal to 83 years, leaving 17 more years to complete the century. And we know that this is what? 1983. And next year is the first of those 17 remaining years of this century. This is how I discovered in this year, the mathematical work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in this Quran to refute the arguments of the scientists and the scholars in Islam, who wants to say that Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah was the last of the prophets and that there would be none after him. The argument contained in the 97th surah is the beginning of the understanding of the work of Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. If we can take just a few moments, I'm going to try to explain it. Because I do think that it's very critical and it's very, very important. Because without this bit of information, without this interlocking key, we will not be able to understand the 19th and the 14th and the other part of the mathematical code. You know, if you take 17, and you add it to Surah 97, you come to what? 114, the end of the whole book. If you get back to the beginning of the Quran and count forward 17, you come to what? Bani Israel, the first book tells you about Muhammad's ascension. 
into the seven heavens. That he's taken from Mecca and he's taken west into Jerusalem. And they say from there he ascended into heaven through the seven heavens until he finally meets of his Lord. This number, 17, is the exact number of Rakhah in the Muslim prayer service which is universally accepted as being obligatory. Obligatory in Arabic is Qaraj. Honorable Elijah Muhammad has had a message to the black man that he took the name corresponding, is that right? to the time of his coming in the early morning of the what? Seven thousand years. And that he took a name bound up with the devotion and the prayer that we would be praying to a true and living God and not a spook. Now, let us see if we can calculate on this number 17 as to why I say it is the root that leads us into the understanding of the 19 and the 14th. In 1978, this is true, I hit into this number 19, but I kept it and retained it because I was studying it and I didn't know exactly where it was going to lead me to. It happened to occur one morning in my study I was reading Surah 75, called The Resurrection. And I came to verse 9, and it made this statement, that when the sun and the moon come together, and it's dark and there's confusion, and moon fades religiously, right, to thy Lord only is a safe place of refuge. These verses continue on to not to worry about the revelation of the book, and that it's explanation will come to you, that it will come according to a certain prescribed period of time, and the summation of these verses, beginning with verse 1 in Surah 75, ends in verse 19. I wasn't aware of why it ended in 19 until just recently. But while I was reading that verse, it flashed in my mind, I said, oh, I said, that was the confusion of the nation when the messenger departed in 1975. Is that right? right? When he departed, it was like there was an eclipse of the light of the sun. Is that right? And people were thrown into darkness, into chaos. According to the footnote which I read at that time, it indicated that it was a sign of the Mahdi and that his name would be concealed, or his name would be hidden, and his name would correspond to the particular type of work that he would be doing. That's all I had to go on at that time. So what I did, I said, hmm, I said, if we put a 19 in front of the 75, I said, that's saying 1975. I said, now, would that mean then that we could read each surah as a year in the history? of the coming of God, the manifestation, his revealing himself, his, his calling forth his messenger. So I started from that period trying to see if I could read in a chronology of the history of Master Farad Muhammad and the messenger in each surah of the Holy Quran, prefixing it with the number 19 as the beginning of the century. So as I progressed, I came to, we came to, the end of 1400 years, 1979, that would be immediately the next year. Then, in 1980, the first year of the Hijrah, as I indicated in the beginning, that's when I began to read the Holy Quran in seven uh, days throughout. Not really understanding why I was so inspired. You know, I've read the Quran. <laughs> I love to read the Quran ever since I fell in love with the Messenger of Allah. And so why, you know, I would have to read it constantly like that. I really wasn't quite aware, but now I understand <laughs> that it was helping me to familiarize me with the language, okay, as we're getting it in the English, even though I don't speak the Arabic. I don't know the Arabic. And I never knew until 1980 that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim contained 19 letters. 
And I had to learn that through in being introduced to an Arab scholar who had computerized the meaning of the Bismillah Rahman into the 19 letters. And he asked me a question. He said, what do you think is the meaning of the 19? And I remember my answer at that time. I said, well, I said, I don't know if I might know the answer. I said, but 19 is an odd number. And I said, it sounds like it wants to complete itself because the next number after that is a 20. <laughs> I said, maybe it has something to do with the 20th century and something about the understanding of the time in which we're living. That's as far as I could go at that time. But within that very same year, in Ramadan, this month that we're observing, is when I began to read the Quran. And as I began to read the Quran in that manner, just things just started popping up. And I would just get excited and I kept, you know, notebooks and notebooks of notes and notes and notes and notes, and every time that I would get ready to say something, you know, it looked like I couldn't say it. <laughs> like I was pregnant, you know. <laughs> and nobody can see it until I start to show <laughs> So, I'm saying that because it's really true. <laughs> okay, so going back to why I feel, you know, at this time that I can share some of these things with you, is because when I saw the lips of the messenger coming in on this 17, leading up to the 19 and 14, I said, that's it, that's it. I said, if you don't see the messenger, if you, if you don't see his lips, then you cannot understand the rest of the message. Is that right? Okay. So let's go back then to this 17. When was the messenger born? What did you say? Again? <laughs> 97. <laughs> 97 silver of the Holy Quran, the Night of Majesty. If you take 17 and take it and compute it as years and add it to the birth date of the messenger, you come to what? Okay. The end of the devil civilization, and in the 1914 are the two sets of initials that have confused the scholars and the scientists for the last 1400 years. And not only that, then you break the 19 and the 14 down as individual letters and put them to the name Master W. Farad Muhammad spelled that way as it is in the program, the Muslim program, on the back of the final call, and Muhammad speaks, you'll find that it's equal to 19 letters. And if you take his name letter for Lord Muhammad, and add that up, you come again to 19 letters. And if you take the name Elijah Muhammad, his messenger, and add up all the letters, you'll get 14. So in these two giants, and to these two gods, if I may say, we have the summary and ending up of the devil civilization, is that right? Amen. Coming to an end, coded up in the message of the Holy Quran. Then I looked at the Bismillah Rahman Rahim again, and I noted that, okay, individually they add up to 19. But I kept searching and searching, and I found another connecting point which proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that not only is he read it in the book, and Master Farad Muhammad read it and quoted in the book in a mathematical language that the scholars and scientists would not be able to tap because it would come through you and I. It would come through his people. Okay? And that we would astound the world because we are not there. we're not even Arabic speaking people. We're not Arab scholars. But he said the root of Islam is what? Yeah. Mathematics. And mathematics is Islam and can be proven in no limit of time. So a beginning of the linking up with the sciences or the scholarly class of people until we come to another juncture where we reach the angels. Is that right? And you can't reach the angels and they can't communicate with you if you don't understand the language out of which they are communicating, which is the root of our assignment. Lesson, Bible, and Holy Quran. 
deep three are the, are the dynamic keys to our understanding the mystery of God, to our understanding the times in which we live. Let's go a step further. Take that 17 now, that brought us to 1914, and add it to 1914, and where will we take it? 1931. Okay. What happened in 1931? Everybody knows. <laughs> the meeting of Master Farad Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is that right? In 1931. He made his appearance in when? 1930, with the discovery of what? The flower planet Pluto. So the thing is so linked up. It's like signs that we have to study in the earth below that's connecting us to universal signs in the heavens above. Everything is linked up. And it is so, it's so interesting to note that in the study of astronomy, that the Pluto, the sign of Pluto, being the faraway planet, is also named in the Greek mythology as God of the Dead. That's where the name originates, God of the Dead. And it is, in astronomy, inclined to the plane of the ecliptic belt, that is, the sun belt, in which all of the nine planets are rotating around the sun, okay? That it is inclined to the plane of, the, of her orbit 17 degrees which is completely a little bit greater than the rest of the, the planets that are, are rotating around the sun. So all of these signs are right there for us to study. So going back then, we've got two 17s coming together so far. 17 and 17 is what? How many problems do we have to study in the problem book? And Brother Bernard Kishmir has stated that Yana Elijah Muhammad said, that there is a, a problem for every year. So each one of those problems is a study of a year. So we're going to know, you know, where to start <laughs> the calculation, where to start the timing. Now, 17 and 17 is 34. That's correct. Now, if you add 3 and 4 together, what does it equal? And if you multiply 3 and 4 together, what does it equal? And 12 and 7 is what? another look into the 19, right there in the problem book. Now, if you take the 19 letters of the Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, it appears in the Holy Quran how many times? 114. However, one of the surahs, which is entitled Surah 9, or the immunity, has a, what they call a missing Bismillah. I think you've read that right. A missing Bismillah. But it pops up 19 surahs later, where? Surah 27, do you know what verse? Verse 30. Uh-oh. 19 what? 30. God comes under a cover of what? Darkness. To do away with who? The hypocrite. <laughs> to destroy one world order and bring in a new. Can we prove it another way? Yes. Before nine, we have how many surahs? Eight. Okay, 8 plus 19 is what? 27. So there is the missing Bismillah, verse 30. And not only that, not only that, the root of our tribe, Shabbat, is right there. Because, he, and under the sign of King Solomon, writing a letter to whom? Sheba. Right? And, and her parents and heritage is from the tribe of Abasha, Ethiopia, a black man. And the name sounds very close, is that right? To Shabbat. All you have to do is, is etymologically reconstruct the letter, turn it around, and you've got the code. That's what I'm getting at. The code is tied up in language, and you know the emphasis that Master Prophet Muhammad placed in his instruction to the messenger to study language. Syllable, is that right? Punctuation mark, is that right? Number, and then it says to study the letters, to study numbers, to study words, because in that is the code. Okay? that will lead us out of the ensnarement of our enemies, and he didn't want to reveal it to the enemies, so he put it very carefully in a mathematical code, like the Morse code and the code that the devil tried to use in order to master their enemies. Is that right? Okay. So we have a code, too, coming to us, and that's why the messenger said to study the Quran and Muhammad's history. He said they will get an understanding of what is about to take place, because he said the Arab calendar count is the most accurate. Is that right? 
that deals with an exact calculation of the judgment and the things that will take place right up to the end. Now, if we take these 19 letters, and as I said, not knowing Arabic, I had to count them after I got that much of the key. How many letters were in each one of those separate words? We have this in the By itself, contains seven letters. Rahman, by itself, contains six letters. Rahim, by itself, contains six letters. Can you see that very well without me having to write it down? So, look at those letters just for a moment. Draw a circle in your mind around 76. Does anything come to you of the messenger teachings on that number? Seventy-six trillion years. Now make a circle around the last two numbers, sixty-six. What comes to you? Sixty-six is where we've got the sun, is that right? The moon, all right? And it's in our national, is that right? Okay? And we've got the sun and the moon in Iraq. So this ninth verse is when the sun and the moon come together, is that right? And there is confusion in the minds of the people, and they don't know which way to flee. So it's only in Allah. And the messenger said those words to me when we were in the hospital in 1975. I said, well, what should I do when I sensed that there was danger, and that there was harm around me? He said, take refuge in Allah. Those are his words. He said, take refuge in Allah. And he says, reading, if you want to talk to Allah, that taking refuge, he said, read the Quran. And that he will open up the keys and give you the answer. As you ask, he will give it to you. Okay? So, 76, root of the sun, 76 trillion years, and also the root of the chronology and writing of what? Our nation's history. Because the finer details, unless he said, take the sun back to 78, right? He said, but he would explain later what that two trillion year difference was. Then you circle the moon, and you got the moon. Now, what about the earth? Can we get the earth in there? Look at 66 again. Add the 6 and the 6 together, and what do you get? Multiply the 6 and the 6, and what do you get? What happens? What are those measurements a sign of? Then the moon was designated from this part called the earth. The moon went what? 12,000 miles up, and the moon fell what? 36,000 miles out of her original pocket, and then she was picked up in her present orbit. So if you add 12 to 36, you get what? 38. And if you add 38 to that 66, you get 114. So everything is like summed up in that Bismillah or Rahman, and you can keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on and keep going. Just out, you can't even get past the opening words of the Holy Quran. So you can imagine if we were to really understand the rest, <laughs> it would probably put us in a completely new orbit, right? <laughs> All right. So the root, then, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is in the Quran and the root of his teaching. How many have come up and said, you can't find that in a book? See, that's from mythology, 76 trillion years ago for the sun, right? 66 trillion years ago. How did our scientists in the past master everything? When you go back and you study Egyptian history, when you study the, uh, the early beginnings of uh, the Indians in Mexico and in India and in all parts of the world, we find that they were masters in what? Mathematics and astronomy. Is that right? Mathematics and astronomy. And that they built and constructed their monuments and their temples to last as a sign aligned up with celestial bodies above. They knew how to calculate and how to build constructed by those principles of which the messenger said we would learn again after the removal of the devil and his power and that we would be studying for 20 more years. That's right? And he said, and some of the things that we would be studying are the mechanical arts and sciences that we lost and that they would be taught to us by our scientists, by our teachers coming from our nation. Until now, I want to go back to Surah 97 to indicate then a few more points and then I will close. There are five verses in that 
verse on top of and the final verse says, preach it in to the Lord of the man. Now I preach that just this morning in my study. Another part of it. So you have guys say it, is that right? Advocate. So I will see that my seven are optional. We can do it if we want to. We can have it in the night. And um, the Kajahad, am I saying the right? Kajahad, in the night. And also when the book, which we can pray about 20, 30 years before the moon says, at 12. We see there that we have five. And we know that we have 17, which is not as the completion of the year in this century, not since 1983. Now, if we go to the beginning, which we also discussed in the 17th year, it is while Muhammad was on his ascension that the five obligatory prayers were made obligatory. Right? It was during that period that he was given the order to have them to start their prayers five times a day. Right? And in this Quran, it mentions that the sixth prayer, that verse, that the sixth prayer is five. The dawn. The dawn prayer. Look at the verse that it is pluralizing. Why is it peace pluralizing at the moment? And we see a picture of Master Farah Muhammad the Great in his mind. The Quran, and it says that your reading, or a long reading, should be rooted of the Quran in the morning time. And that that would be witnessed by whom? And the sign of the book in his hand. It is a sign both of the ending up of the old world and its nothing and the coming in of what? A new, a new book, a new sign that will take off life from the old book and then lead us into the knowledge and understanding of the new. If we take five verses and multiply it by 17, we get 80 times. And if we speak it that by 19 again, we get 1985. The 85th of the whole Quran is called Al Barish, the star. And according to our lesson, it says that the scientists are 134,000, is that right? Who mm-hmm. were capable of overcoming the beast and his argument, right? And were able to be the star, and they would return to their original land. But the real people he saw as chosen and justice. And that they would go down with the beast. But then there's a challenge. He said that we think we can do the level, the prophecy, and that we will get all of the 17 again, million. He said a lot of people in the world, 12, 17, I can think of this 30 million or 35 million hearts, almost the same as their own. So why is it because all of those numbers are part of the code? And if you remove the numbers, you don't break the code. You, break, you don't be able to break the code. And then we have, in student and enrollment, we're coming to a juncture of contact with our Indian brothers, is that right? And also with our brothers and sisters in Mexico. So part of the code is in there, they are linked on at a certain time when we understand our assignment. Because our code links up with their code, and I don't have time to do it right now, but it's very important. It, it, and it's all based on the same number, because we have our population, 17 million plus the what? Two million Indians make what? 19 million. That's right. About 19 again. So, 1985, according to the Bible, in the history of the Exodus and Moses, he leaves out in the what? For 400 and what? 30 years. And 430 years of our enslavement, our enemy will be, will be completed in the year 1985. Okay. So, all of the signs are here for us to study. Both the low and the dark. And in order to master it, we must have a knowledge and understanding of our lessons. That's the look, that's the base, and then that will lead us, okay, with confirmation as we study the Quran and also the Bible. I wanted to just say this in closing. That here on 19, Leads into the question. Do you remember the answer that I answered to follow? That the 19, it seems that, okay, one more number, and we rounded up to 20 in the 20th century. We're going to see a student entitled Taha, the final call. 
in which a trumpet is blown. On the gathering together, after what? The Messianic code is tied up to the mountain under the sign of the Messiah. So it's imminent return. So with the preaching of Christ's imminent return and the trumpet death coming from our brother minister to his far time, the final call. Is that right? Is there not the final call to what? Okay? Great. The final call to Islam and the God saying that the wrap up on the old world and the new thing is about to happen altogether. Therefore, he repeats, that is why the honorable Elijah Muhammad said, to look at him, is that right? To listen to what he's saying? To obey his instructions, is that right? And then suddenly in the same story, beginning with verse 90, we have that great controversy of the people disobeying Aaron's order. And they break up into the madness and then suddenly Moses appears. Amen. And then he began to talk to each one of the Greeks. He asked the people, why did they not obey? Then he goes and he asks the Samaritans, okay? Then he asks Aaron, and then everything comes to that point. And you he, and he hear these words, and we will gather together the dirty blue eyes on that day. And it measures to 10 centuries. And 10 centuries is read as, in a day, 1,000 years. Okay? So here we go back again, the sign of the thousand years, and now brought down to a capture. In other words, you see, the readings go back to astronomical proportion, to the very origin of the creation of the heavens and the earth, back to the number of 76. Okay? And now, as we're coming close to the time that's happening, it's a condensation. Every time now, by the year, going down, by the minute, okay? by the second. And you won't get that unless you study our lesson. It's in our lesson. And then, in that way, we will be able to go forward into the new world, not confused. Okay? So we will have been exalted. So with the exaltation of the messenger, that means that your people have to be exalted too. With greater understanding, with greater insight, right? With greater wisdom. Because how in the world can we lead others and we cannot lead ourselves? How can we go forward if we don't understand our own messenger? Okay? So the examination before Almighty God arrives means do we know who God is? Do we know who the messenger is? Do we understand each other? Do we see each other as members of the God Father? So from that point, I'm going to end by just making one more statement. You'll notice that I was very, very mm, enthusiastic and very, very happy to be able to present you in Phoenix, Arizona, on the Methodist birthday, October the 7th, a community of a cultural expression coming out of the world of music, color, and medicine for the healing of the nation. And I now have blessed us to be able to perform or to do this portion of that lecture in San Diego, California this past weekend before we went to Los Angeles to hear the minister deliver uh, a electrifying message to Bishop Dickens and our member, uh, I think Minister Reed, and many, many other ministers um, were on the podium that night in Los Angeles. We had just come in from San Diego to prepare to share Sylvia accompanying him, and we presented a portion of that to the first convention called the Institute of African Mysticism. It was very interesting. So that we saw there the brothers and sisters who were sort of like been in the Midwest maybe, studying for many, many years of God's study of meditation. And having attuned themselves to the channel of certain gifts, such as mental telepathic thought, the art of healing, and all of this going on. You know? And I'm thinking to myself, I said, this is a very, very important meeting that we have attended, because these are the kinds of gifts that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that will come to us, is that right? If we keep ourselves pure and clean and put the rock off the rock of our bones, that we will be able to tune in, that we will be able to do many, many wonders that the world has never seen before. And in all that we witness, we saw the power of the black man coming into his own. 
I should say, the black man and the black woman. And when they see the messenger as the master, once they see Master Farad Muhammad, we have got some power coming into this nation <laughs> that will shift the foundations of the world. And we have to be prepared to receive such brothers and sisters who get our sincere and genuine and divine. And with the direction that we have been given from Almighty God Allah, when we all to come together as a family, we will make a beautiful nation of the right to embrace brothers and sisters from all around the world. So I feel in my closing that we have now come to a certain point in the venture of our history. And if, if we keep ourselves clean, as we complete our thoughts of Ramadan, but I want us to be very, very thoughtful and careful of the time and the kinds of people now that we are going on to. And that we want to be the best. Is that right? We want to show them that the light that the honorable Elijah Muhammad has given out is the brightest light in the heavens and in the earth. And that we will turn us over into a higher wisdom that will outshine anything that has ever been produced since the first God made the sun and produced himself. So let us go forward in the spirit of this Ramadan with more understanding of the time. And that he will open our hearts and minds to greater and greater understanding until we meet again at Savior's Day. And I can't tell you what that's going to be like. <laughs> but I think that we really have to prepare ourselves because things are happening very, very fast because of time. The last 10 months of the month of Ramadan are specially to be observed. And the last 10 months of Ramadan, which is made the last 10 months of December, for us, the beginning of the first revelation of the Quran began. Some of the scholars and scientists say it was on the 25th month, the 27th month, or the 29th month, but they're not here. And that is why we have the chapter called the Night of Magic. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad himself wrote, and I'm sure I can say this with you in confidence, he wrote in a letter to his son Wallace, in the disturbed state and condition of his son's deviation, he mentioned this tour, 97, and he said the exact thing that was written in the footnote that 82 years into a century, marking 17 more years to complete the century, meant the ending up of the old world order and the coming in of a new book of a new revelation coming from Almighty God Allah. And he said, I wish that I could tell you what that means. But he said, but since you are not of my followers, I cannot take you into the circle of that man. So I pray Allah that we will fast, that we will keep our hearts clean, our minds clean, and pray to Allah and ask for his guidance, forgiveness, and make our precious vehicles and vessels to receive guidance, instruction, and life-giving teaching from Him that will carry us into the light of the world. Thank you very much for your attention, and I love you all very much. I feel